think it goes without saying that the semiconductor industry is massively important and becoming even more important. And I'm not even talking about artificial intelligence, companies like NVIDIA, TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor that manufactures the most leading edge chips, basically for everybody that designs and needs semiconductors. I'm talking about the basic analog semiconductors that connect these digital devices to the real world, manage electricity, make electric vehicles work, run all the industrial equipment in all of the factories all over the world, and so many other important things to our daily lives. I want to talk about two companies that most people have no idea what they do, why I think they might be worth buying right now. I'm Jason Hall. This is Investing Unscripted. This video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. If you're looking for even more great stock ideas, we got two we're going to talk about now, but The Motley Fool is going to give you its 10 best stocks to buy right now. Go to our special link to get it. It's fool.com forward slash unscripted. Again, that's fool.com forward slash unscripted. So let's start with the first stock that I want to highlight, and that's Texas Instruments. So a lot of people might think of Texas Instruments as the company that made the calculator that they used for calculus back in high school or in college. That's true. But the vast majority of their revenues come from analog semiconductors and embedded semiconductors that they make for the industrial and automotive industries. Think about factory equipment, other types of industrial applications. These are mostly analog semiconductors, again, helping these devices in interact with the real world and also manage power. The automotive industry is a large and growing part of its business. Those two combined make up almost three quarters of the company's total revenue. One thing that's not on this slide that I want to highlight, though, is this company in terms of its reach and depth. It has something like 100,000 customers. It's a fully integrated business, about 90% of the products that they make, all the way from the silicon wafers that they produce, that they use to make the semiconductors and the chips on. They generate all of that stuff in-house. Most of their customers go to TI's website to make their purchases. They have in-house design. They do a lot of design work for customers. And there's a good chance that if there is an analog semiconductor you need, it's an off-the-shelf part. You can go on TI's website and you can find it, and you can order it, and you can have thousands of them show up within a few weeks. It is a remarkably strong, important business. Now, there's some weakness in the business right now. You look at its results over the past couple of years, revenue's down 4.5% since the beginning of 2022. It's down closer to 10% since the beginning of 2023, and free cash flow has plummeted. We see that's down almost 80% from where it was at the peak. Now, here's the thing. This is a very cyclical industry. Despite the long-term growth potential, there are definitely ups and downs. Here's its revenue going all the way back to the beginning of 2010. And you can see there have been lots and lots of periods where revenue has skyrocketed and then fallen, and then skyrocketed again and then fallen. And we've seen that play out. Yet revenue is up almost 70% since the beginning of 2010. It's basically doubled if you look at the peak when revenue peaked at the end of 2022. Free cash flows definitely have come down a tremendous amount more recently. Now, let's talk about why I'm not concerned about that and why I think now is a good time to be buying Texas Instruments. TI does a really good job of allocating its capital. This is one thing I think that is incredibly impressive. Over the past decade, the company hasn't acquired anybody. Their focus is entirely organic growth. They have some of the best technology. They have one of the great things about the business that they're in is that they can stand up a manufacturing line and start producing semiconductors. And that same semiconductor can still be viable in 10, 20, or even 30 years in some cases. As long as there's a piece of equipment out there on the road using it, guess what? You will need a replacement part for that semiconductor at some point. It is a hugely durable business that is a massive differentiator from the bleeding edge and leading edge semiconductors that you see come off of the lines at Samsung or TSMC, for example, that guess what? Every couple of years, there's something even faster, even better. It's much more important that you have redundancy and reliability with what Texas Instruments is producing, and that is what they have in spades. Now, they've done a wonderful job of investing in R&D and also spending on capital growth to expand. They have a big thing that they're doing right now that I want to highlight in just a minute that I think is going to add to their competitive advantages. And then what they do with the rest of the cash that's left over, they send it back to shareholders. They buy back stock. They pay and grow a dividend. We're 20 years into their dividend growth streak at this point. So here's one thing I want to highlight they're doing right now. They're spending a ton of capital on it that I think it is so important to their future. And that is this 300 millimeter wafer size. What exactly does that mean? 
So the wafer is the piece of silicon that is used to produce semiconductors, individual chips. The larger the wafer, the more chips you can get on each wafer. There's a massive cost benefit to that. As a company that owns 90% of its own wafer supply, it is perfectly positioned to leverage a larger wafer to drive its costs down. You see this last bullet here, structural cost advantage, moving to a 300 millimeter wafer size from the current 200 millimeter standard will lower the cost about 40%. And a big part of that is every single wafer will have 2.3 times more chips on it. What does that mean on the bottom line? In short, it means growing gross margin from 60% on that current 200 millimeter wafer standard to 68% driving down the cost of goods substantially. It is a massive boost to the bottom line. As a result of that focus on developing and increasing its 300 millimeter wafer supply, the company is deploying a lot of CapEx right now during a period of cyclical weakness. So we highlighted the company's free cash flow has absolutely plummeted because of the timing of focusing on its long-term growth, deploying the capital to convert to that 300 millimeter wafer size. That's timed with the downturn in demand from a lot of its industrial customers, the weakness in the automotive sector. If you follow EVs at all, electric car companies are struggling. Sales are weak. That means there's less demand for those semiconductors. But if you look at the long term, you see right here on the chart, looking out at 2029, the expectation is that we are going to see a substantial increase in demand for semiconductors. So the company is spending the money now to make sure the business is ready to maximize its profit across the cycle. Put all that together, despite the cyclical weakness in the revenues, the free cash flow that's coming down, and Texas Instruments is positioning itself for the long term. The stock price is a little bit down from its recent high. It's still well down from its all-time high. The dividend yield is close to 3%. That long track record of growing the dividend is well supported by the balance sheet and cash flows. I think Texas Instruments should be on your list of semiconductor stocks to buy right now. Let's move on to Wolf Speed. This is the next semiconductor stock I want to talk about that's in that analog space. Frankly, it could be one that disrupts a little bit of Texas Instruments business. So what is Wolf Speed? Wolf Speed is an innovator that is looking to disrupt the analog semiconductor industry with silicon carbide. Silicon carbide semiconductors can handle higher voltage, higher current levels, and that's really important for things like EVs and in some industrial applications as well. But particularly, they're looking at the growth of electric vehicles. The catch is that silicon carbide semiconductors cost a lot more money. So Texas Instruments is doing things to drive their costs down, adding to their cost advantages that they already have. At the time that Wolfspeed is saying, well, we have this great technology that's going to cost more. The reality is there's a lot of applications where that higher cost silicon carbide semiconductor are going to make a ton of sense. And Wolfspeed is definitely the leader there. And we've certainly seen its revenue grow over the past few years. Here's the problem. Its revenue has grown. The cost of goods sold has also gone up a ton. Gross margins, well, they have absolutely collapsed. And guess what? It's not just cost of goods sold that's gone up, but operating expenses have increased substantially as well. You put it all together, Wolfspeed burning a ton of money, burned $2.2 billion in free cash flow last year. Big part of that, capital expenditures. This is a company that is spending a ton of money to grow. Look at that $2.2 billion in free cash burn last year. Well, $1.8 billion almost of it was CapEx. The company is spending a lot of money to expand. A couple of things that are happening. We talked about that 300 millimeter wafer size that Texas Instruments is developing. Guess what? We also have a larger form factor coming from Wolf Speed as well, moving from 150 millimeter to a 200 millimeter. Same idea. Increase utilization, drive down costs, increase yield, smart moves that they're making to help increase output. They're also taking steps to continue to innovate, and they're spending the capital now to deploy the facilities to be ready when the demand is there. So there you have it. Two semiconductor companies. You've probably heard Texas Instruments' name, but you might not have realized how important they are in the chip world. And then Wolfspeed, there's a good chance that's a company you don't know much about. Who are these two stocks for? You know, if you're a more conservative investor, you're looking for dividends, dividend growth, looking for a long-term hold, maybe not with the same ceiling, the opportunity for growth, but a little lower floor, you know, lower risk, less chance of permanent capital losses. That's TI. Texas Instruments is probably the better stock to invest in. If you are a risk-tolerant growth investor, 
wolf speed might be compelling. The stock price has continued to come down as interest rates have skyrocketed, as weakness for industrial semiconductors has remained relatively high, and the market for electric vehicles has remained really soft too. If you can tolerate the risk, the company is taking on an enormously difficult task to build out this infrastructure, deploy capital, frankly, that it doesn't necessarily have all of, having to rely on capital markets and other sources of cash to deploy what it's trying to do. There's some risk you lose money here. If you're thinking about the long term and the potential, I think Wolf Speed, the risk reward profile is really attractive right now.